Hi everybody. So in this video, let's take a look at a bunch of car advertisements published in American magazines between 1946 and 1956. And we'll be looking at them in chronological order. And this is the first from Better Homes and Gardens, 1946. does not actually say what model this is so it's just an ad for Chevrolet uh, you can see that there's only women in this advertisement and it is uh, directed at women because it's published in a women's magazine You'll see here, I'm not sure if this is legible, but it says your Chevrolet's no draft ventilation, for example, banishes the threat of driving colds, windblown hair, keeps you calm, cool, looking your loveliest. This is also from 1946 from Good Housekeeping, also primarily a women's magazine and uh, also directed at women as you can see. This is for Ford. Ford's out front with Mrs. America. It should be noted that 1946, of course, was the year after World War II ended and the American economy was shifting from a military production capacity back to a consumer orientation. And so people who haven't bought, who hadn't been able to buy a lot of consumer goods, certainly cars for the previous five years, were able to do so again. And uh, so the car industry was uh, very interested in getting back on track with uh, regular consumers uh, since over the past several years they had been building tanks and airplanes. This up here says, so wide, so deep. And this one says, looks the last. Oh, looks that last, excuse me. I'm busting with pride. And then, so smooth, so quiet. It says here, our Ford dealer told us it has a 100 horsepower V8 engine. But frankly, you'd hardly know the car has an engine at all. It's so quiet. It says, that's right, lady, and so's the 90 horsepower Ford 6. These days, if uh, an engine could only muster 100 horsepower with eight cylinders, uh, it would probably uh, never leave the factory. As you can see, 1951, the Studebaker. The gas economy you want, the low upkeep you want, the dependable performance you want. The Studebaker Champion is one of the four lowest price, largest selling cars. This is from Better Homes and Gardens as well. I have to say, it's interesting, you, you cannot see that woman's neck It's a nice looking car, I have to say. Look at these people back here looking with envy. Well, 
this is uh, from Willis. And as some of you may know, uh, the Willis company is the one that originally manufactured what are now called Jeeps. Um, Jeep, the name Jeep originates from the acronym GP or general purpose as in general purpose vehicle. So the Jeeps that were used by the American uh, military in World War II were GP vehicles or general purpose vehicles. GP became Jeep and they were manufactured by the Willis Corporation. And I think you'll agree that the uh, front facade there uh, absolutely resembles a modern Jeep. They've sort of kept that uh, over their history. And uh, eventually Jeep was, uh, Willis went away and it became Jeep and Jeep became Chrysler while well, it merged with Chrysler. Uh, but there is uh, an original Jeep little truck uh, from the Willis Corporation and uh, it is remarkable how many American automotive manufacturers there were in the first part of the 20th century uh, lots of them uh, but over time as in many industries they merged went out of business one way or another consolidated I do like the spare tire right back here. Right there is the spare tire. Presumably that's the uh, just to the right of the back seat. And this is also 1951. Also 1951, as you can see, for the Ford Victoria. Mercury had a vehicle called the Crown Victoria. In fact, it still does. They're mainly police cars now, I suppose. But this is the Victoria. Again, we have the Ford Victoria, the famous 100 horsepower V8 engine, and your pick of conventional drive, overdrive, or the new Fordomatic drive. With any of them, Ford's automatic mileage maker delivers high compression performance on regular gasoline. Well, all right. I have to admit again, nice looking car. a Dodge. I think you'll start to notice that as we move forward in time here, the cars start getting bigger. Uh, smooth as a mill pond. Visibility unlimited. Built for the rugged life, which of course the ram there is uh, pretty emblematic of Dodge. There it is again down there. If you love to live in luxury, feast your eyes on the rich Dodge decorator interiors. Low, long lines, truly limousine luxury for just a few dollars more than the lowest price cars. It is true. I, you can see the very... Uh, low ceiling there in relation to other cars. Hmm. Uh, experience the thrill of Dodge Gyromatic, America's lowest price automatic transmission. Again, I don't like to uh, sort of condescend to the past. 
in any way, but I do like the um, the the names that some of this technology is given. Gyromatic. What was the other one? Fordomatic. <laughs> so the gyromatic and the Fordomatic for an automatic transmission. Why not? Who came up with those names? How much were they paid? More than I am, I'm sure. Now this is another vehicle from Willis and to show that I'm not uh, a liar, here is, um, here is a Jeep produced by the Willis Company and indeed uh, made by the makers of the world famous Jeep. Now, you know, up to 35 miles on a gallon, that is uh, excellent. That was fantastic then, and it's pretty fantastic now. I would own this car. Now, see, here's a good name. The new Hurricane 6 engine. F-head design with 7.6 compression. One of the world's most efficient power plants. Now, I don't know what that means, but I'll take it. Interesting, I think, in this ad, and this is 1952 as well. Uh, you'll see jet airplanes, which, of course, were not particularly old by this time. Uh, Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier in a jet airplane in 1947, and Nazi Germany was manufacturing the Mr. Schmidt 262 jet airplane in 1944 and 1945, which was the first. But that was only, that was less than a decade before this ad was published. And jet aircraft was as technologically appealing as, uh, you know, I guess cell phones are today or certainly 10 years ago. The point is, is that jet airplanes set a new standard for advancement. And so it was not uncommon for car manufacturers to sort of associate themselves with airplanes. And so uh, this will be more evident later, but in the 1950s, cars began to develop fins and the fins were intended to be an echo of airplane fins and this emblem right here clearly meant to resemble an airplane uh, and that will become more and more obvious but uh, that's the first instance I have here why isn't someone sitting in the back Nice ad. Oops. Oh. Let's see. 52, 1952 Ford with this bear. Obviously, these are station wagons, and what's notable about that is that, again, the war ended in 1945. Millions of soldiers were demobilized in 1946. They went home, they got married, and they had families. And so that was the start of the baby boom. Uh, which was the largest generation to that point. And uh, that created demand for family-friendly consumer goods. And one of those uh, was a car. And so station wagons were created to fill that need for family-centered vehicle. 
Although it should be noted, of course, that there is no kid in this picture, but uh, maybe that's what the bear is supposed to re represent, but why wouldn't they just have a kid? Who knows? But the point is, is that uh, station wagons would become more and more popular because uh, everyone had a young family. You will see that the 110 horsepower Stratostar V8 or the 101 horsepower Mileage Maker 6. Well, here we go. Big enough for Uncle Grizzly and his, and his nine cubs. So there's the allusion to having a family. Ford Omatic. Well, now this is probably my favorite. I mean, look at this, this is great. Uh, now these are concept cars, and of course concept cars always are more exciting than production models, but come on, I mean, this is great. Uh, 335 horsepower performance from a 550 pound motor. Hey, look, uh, 335 horsepower is a respectable number today, and that is three times the power that we've been looking at so far. And then here is the LeSabre, which is a Buick, which uh, was in production for an extremely long time until 2006. It did not look like that uh, as it got uh, into the 80s and 90s and 2000s, but uh, that's too bad because uh, that is a sharp car. I think so, anyway. I think it's fair to say that this is meant to be an echo of an air intake for a jet just like the wings here, the fins, I should say. Again, an echo of uh, um, a jet airplane. But these are fantastic. Yeah, I like any of these. I'll take it. Well, here we have Pontiac, and this is from 1952, still. Or excuse me, it's from 1953. Station wagon, complete with child and toy horse. Happy woman driving a sharp car there. It's the dual streak Pontiac. It's great, and as some of you may know, Pontiac ceased to be in about 2009, I think. I believe that's right. Yeah, nice ad, nice cars. Those are some leaning palms, though, I will say that. Nineteen fifty three Chrysler. This says the beautiful Chrysler New Yorker Club Coupe, the brilliant Chrysler New York Deluxe Newport the stunning Chrysler Windsor Deluxe Convertible. I, 
like this color. I think that's nice. I like that poodle. I know it may be very, very difficult to see, but that really looks like that guy is holding a parakeet, or a, I shouldn't say a parakeet, a parrot. That's, that really is what it looks like. I don't think that that comes out on the camera, but I really think he's holding a, par um, a parrot. I don't know why. Yeah, nice cars. Nineteen fifty-three Ford. This is an emblem that says fiftieth anniversary of Ford, nineteen oh three to nineteen fifty-three. Here are a few of the 41 worth more features that established the 53 Ford as America's new standard of value. This says Crestline here on the sign. Nice color. This is 1953 as well for Dodge. Smoothest car afloat. Oh, because it says lowest price car with fluid drive. I don't know what fluid drive is. I don't. It could be something like uh, a hydraulic kind of suspension, but I do not know. Nice Christmas scene there. Well, I say Christmas because there's packages in the back, but looks like there was almost a catastrophe there with the uh, footprints so close to the front of the car. Nice picture. Here we are in 1956, Ford. A lot going on in this ad. Here's the Ford Thunderbird, which debuted in 1955, I believe. I don't believe it was 1956. I think it was 1955. 202 horsepower Thunderbird V8. Well, it says Y8. I don't know why. No pun intended. Well, that is a nice looking car right there. That is great paint job. Of course, the white walls you see everywhere, uh, which is great. Now look at this. It says four, excuse me, new Ford seat belts optional are designed to keep seat occupants securely in their seats. They are anchored firmly to the floor and can resist up to 4,000 pounds pressure. It was not until the late 1960s that seat belts were mandatory in cars and that was a result of the pressure instigated by Ralph Nader who uh, ran for president four times in the last 20 years and is a well-known consumer advocate. Well, he got his start as a uh, consumer advocate uh, addressing issues of safety in cars. He wrote a book called Unsafe at Any Speed in 1965 or 1966. I, I can't remember the exact date in which he documented the deaths and, 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 in, and injuries, excuse me, uh, due to crashes because vehicles were manufactured unsafely. And he suggested that if seat belts were in every car, that would help. And sure enough, 
they do. And so back in 1956, you could have seat belts, but they were optional. Maybe you want to stay anchored securely in your seat. Maybe you don't. Good ad. And finally, for this time, 1956 Pontiac. The fabulous 1956 Pontiac with the big and vital General Motors automotive first. Going around this racetrack. This is, says uh, Pontiac's new big bore Strato Streak V8 engine with a terrific thrust of 227 blazing horsepower. So in the first ads we looked at, we were looking at 90 and 100 horsepower. Now we're at 227. Uh, pretty impressive. Again, not to make fun, but just uh, because I think it's perhaps charming, but at least a little funny is, uh, again, we have the Strato Streak V8 engine to go along with the Hydromatic. I think manufacturers should start that again, giving these kind of a gimmicky names to equipment. I think that would help. Why not? Well, all right, that does it for now. Um, there will be another video looking at more of these uh, and car ads too, which I will be produce, producing shortly. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed looking at these. I certainly did. Thank you for watching.